Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about leading and lagging, power factor, and our apparent power angle, theta s, compared to our impedance angle, theta z. Okay, so say I give you a circuit with a known apparent power magnitude, say 75 kVA, a known voltage of 40 volt, three phase, and a power factor of 0 0.8. And I say it's lagging. If I ask you to find the current, could you do it? What about if I ask you to find the phase angle of the current? Could you do it? What happens when we're dealing with lagging versus leading? How does that change the polarity of our current, and why do so many people get it wrong? This is exactly what I'm going to attempt to solve for you guys in this episode of leading versus lagging, power factor, and apparent power angle versus our impedance angle. One of the biggest questions we get asked over and over is students having a hard time with power factor and how it relates to leading and lagging. What exactly is leading and lagging, and how it comes in terms of the problems we're asked to solve? So. I think this video will be a really good demonstration and hopefully will clear it up for just about any kind of question you could have. So let's jump into it. First thing we're going to talk about is our apparent power angle, theta s, and how it relates to our impedance angle, theta z. So we can start by writing our apparent power vector is equal to, we know as our voltage vector multiplied by our current vector with a conjugate. Now, typically voltage is always constant, right? We're going to have some kind of power system with a known applied voltage, and we're going to have a current that's drawn by a specific load, and that's going to get our power. So we're not going to worry about our voltage right now. So to compare our apparent power to impedance, we're going to rewrite our current in a way that relates to impedance. So we know from Ohm's law that V equals to IR. And in this case, because we're dealing with complex impedance, we're going to rewrite this R as a big Z. So we can rewrite this to say I equals V over Z. We're going to go ahead and plug that back into here. So now our apparent power looks like this. It's going to be our voltage vector multiplied by our voltage vector again and our impedance vector. And this term is going to be conjugate. Now, we're going to expand this a little bit. And we've got, this is going to equal our voltage magnitude and our voltage angle. And up top here, we're going to have, again, our voltage magnitude and our voltage angle divided by our impedance magnitude and our impedance angle. Still conjugate. Now we keep going. We've got our apparent power. Again, is equal to our voltage times this current term here, which is going to look like this. Our voltage magnitude divided by our impedance magnitude, since it's division, at an angle of theta v minus theta z, since we're dividing. Now we're going to deal with this conjugate. This conjugate means that whatever angle this is, it's going to be negative, or it's going to, the polarity is going to change. So again, we can rewrite our apparent power to look like this. We've got our same V over Z term here. And all we're going to do to get rid of that conjugate symbol is we're going to place a negative right in front of this angle. That way, whatever this angle ends up coming out to be, the polarity is going to be the opposite. It's just like multiplying by a negative 1. So this is going to simplify as, since we're multiplying this term and this term, we've got our voltage magnitude here multiplied by this magnitude here, which is V over Z. And now our angle, since we're multiplying, we're going to add them together, but we've got to be conscious of this negative term. So we're going to have our voltage angle minus our voltage angle minus our impedance angle. Now look what happens right here. These two are going to cancel, right? Because we're subtracting them from each other. 
And because of this negative sign right here, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So let's rewrite this. Our parent power is equal to, we're going to combine these two terms here, v squared over z, at an angle of a positive theta z. Look at that. Now, how else can we write our parent power? Well, we know that our parent power vector is going to be the same as our parent power magnitude at an angle of theta s. And then we also know from up here, we can rewrite this as our parent power vector equals magnitude vi. And because of the conjugate, it's going to be theta v minus, oops, minus theta i. Now let's set them all equal to each other. Now we know that because essentially here is our parent power formula. We can say that theta s also can be rewritten to equal theta z, our impedance angle, which also equals our voltage phase angle minus our current phase angle. So theta v minus theta i. So all three of these terms are equal to each other. Really quick, if anyone's wondering how we got this, well, we can simply say that our parent power is equal to our voltage times our current. And because this is a conjugate, we're going to put a negative sign right here. And they multiply, the two magnitudes multiply because we're in polar and the two angles add. And that negative sign right here from the conjugate comes into place right here. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. The biggest takeaway, first off, is our apparent power angle equals our impedance angle, which also equals the difference from our voltage angle and our current angle. Now, what the heck does this have to do with leading and lagging? Okay, leading and lagging. I'm gonna draw two quick circuits. Okay. I've drawn two equal looking circuits. And really quick again, these hats just mean they're vectors. That means this term has both a magnitude and an angle. So for the first one, I'm going to say Z is equal to A plus JB, which is the same thing as a magnitude Z at a phase angle of theta Z. And this one off to the right, I'm going to say this Z is equal to a minus JB, which is the same thing as magnitude Z with a negative impedance angle of minus theta Z. Now, what does this mean? Well, in this term right here, our impedance angle is positive. Since our impedance angle is positive, therefore our apparent power angle must be positive, right? Since they're one and the same, like we already found out. Well, if we were to draw our, pi our power triangle, that's going to look something like this. Now, here's theta s. This is what we would call an inductive load. And the reason why we call this an inductive load is because inductors have a positive imaginary component. And that, of course, is this guy right here. Our j term is positive. Now, let's compare this to the circuit on the right. This is actually going to be a capacitive circuit. And the reason for that is capacitors have a negative imaginary component. And of course, that's this guy right up here. That means this J term, which is the imaginary term, is going to be negative. And if we draw our power triangle, for this one, it's going to be opposite. So that means that it's going to look like this. Here's our theta s is actually negative because our impedance angle is negative. Now, let's compare these two. Another term for inductive is, we will call this a lagging 
circuit. And that's because our current in this example, I, is going to lag voltage. Anytime we're talking about inductive or capacitive or leading and lagging, we're always going to reference I in terms of V. Never V in terms of I. It's just the standard. Now, what exactly does this mean? When we say I lags V, if we draw the phasor diagram comparing both our current and our voltage, if we say our phase angle for voltage is zero as a reference, putting it right here on the x-axis, for I to lag V, I would have to be, sorry, negative. The phase angle for I would have to be negative. That would put it somewhere down here. Now look at this. Remember, in a typical ABC positive sequence, which we're always going to assume is true unless otherwise stated, our phasers always rotate counterclockwise. So since I is lagging V, it's behind V, it's trying to catch up to V, our V, if it's placed on the x-axis as reference, it's going to cross first before I. So as these two rotate this way, V will always cross this x-axis first because I is behind it or it is lagging. So I lag V, that means it's a lagging circuit, which really just means it's an inductive system. Now let's compare it to our capacitive circuit over here. Another word for capacitive, as I'm sure you guessed it, is leading. We can call this a leading system or leading circuit or leading load, uh, however you want to call it. Now simply what this means is if we compare it to the other example, that means I, starting with I first, I is going to lead V. So this time it's going to be in front. So V, if our theta V, our angle for our voltage, is set to zero for reference. That means for I to lead V, the magnitude, or I'm sorry, the phase angle for I will have to be positive. So let's draw out this phasor diagram here. V is right on the x-axis because the angle is zero for reference. For I to lead V, that's going to put I somewhere up in here. And again, since it's a positive system, they're going to be rotating counterclockwise. V is now behind I. It's trying to catch up to I because I is in front or I is leading it, which makes it a leading system. Okay, what the heck does this have to do now with power factor? Well, I'm glad you asked. The main reason why we're given either lagging or leading or inductive and capacitive is because of this. Power factor is always going to be given to us as a positive ratio. That means it's going to be point something. Now, power factor, by definition, is the cosine of our apparent power angle. Now here's the thing, the funny thing about the cosine term. The cosine of a positive is going to be equal to the cosine of a negative. If you don't believe me, try this right now. Take the cosine of 1, see what you get, and then take the cosine of negative 1. They should be the same. Now the trouble with that is, well, if we're given power factor, say we have a power factor of 0 0.8, we know we can find our apparent power angle by taking the inverse cosine of it. However, what you lose is whether or not this was positive or negative. Since this, since the cosine of the angle was already done to give us our power factor over here, when we take the inverse cosine of it, we have no clue if this angle was positive or negative before. That's why anytime we're given a power factor, we're told it's either going to be leading or lagging. And that is the key to knowing if we're dealing with a positive or negative apparent power angle, whether we're dealing with a lagging and inductive circuit or a leading and capacitive circuit. Now, what else? If we're dealing with a leading system, that means our angle of our current is positive 
we're dealing with a lagging system. That means theta i is negative. So how can we tell? Well, let's draw our phasor diagrams again. For a leading system, i leads v, and a lagging system, i lags v. That means that for a lagging system, our phase angle of our current is negative, and for a leading system, the phase angle of our current is positive. Okay, are you ready to bring this all together? Now, if you're still with me, the reason why all of this is important, and the reason why we've been talking about this for the last 10 minutes is because what happens if, say here's a sample problem. We've got a circuit that consumes 75 kV of power, and it's a 480 volt three phase system. What happens if you're asked to find the current if our power factor is equal to 0 0.8 leading or 0 0.8 lagging? Well, we know from Ohm's law that we can find our current by dividing our power by our voltage. And we know since it's a three-phase problem, we need to multiply our voltage by the square root of 3. And this gives us a current magnitude of 90.2 amps. What about the angle? Well, we know our power factor is 80. So since our power factor equals cosine of theta s, which is the same as cosine of theta v minus theta i, and since we're assuming that theta v is zero, or the angle at reference, because the problem didn't give us an angle for it, we can say that our current phase angle is going to be the same as the inverse cosine of our power factor, 0 0.8, which comes out to 36.8 degrees. Now, if this is a leading system, we know that our current has to be positive, and our answer would be 90.2 amps at an angle of 36.9. However, for a lagging system, we know that our current has to be negative. So if this was a lagging power factor of 0 0.80, our current would actually be 90.2 amps at a phase angle of negative 36.9. And that's why this is all important, because if you're doing a problem and you're giving lagging or leading and you come up with the wrong polarity of our angle and you have to say multiply current times the voltage to find power or you need to find the impedance as a relationship between our current and our voltage, you will get the problem wrong if you have the wrong polarity here because you're going to end up either subtracting when you should have added or adding when you should have subtracted. So I hope this makes sense. Again, the big key takeaways from this episode is our apparent power angle is equal to our impedance angle, which is the same as our voltage minus the current angle. And lagging circuits mean it's inductive, and our current is going to be negative, the angle. And for a leading circuit, it's going to be capacitive, and our current angle is going to be positive. Okay, that's it for this video. For more examples and to visit our premium review course, come see us at www.electricalpereview.com.